is that vision is simply trying to articulate where you want to get to from where you are today. Because if you take the time to develop a clear and concise and inspiring vision statement, then business leaders can align their team around a common goal and therefore inspire them to work towards a shared vision. I think that's pretty simple. So let's get into some examples. Well, there's the Olympic rowing team in the late 1990s. And yes, I love a sporting analogy and I love sport. Uh, but they had a vision back in the late 1990s of winning an Olympic gold in 2000. Now to do that, they developed the simple mantra of Will it make the boat go faster? Because they realize if it makes the boat go faster, they're gonna get closer to that goal. So anything that made the boat go faster, they focused on and they did it. E.g. getting up at 7 a.m. on a Sunday morning to train makes the boat go faster. So they did it. But then anything that didn't make the boat go faster, they jettisoned to focus on those things that e.g. going to a pub on a Saturday night doesn't make the boat go faster, unfortunately. So therefore, they didn't do it. And then can you start to now see how that sort of thinking may streamline a small business and keep everybody focused and engaged in the getting from where we are now to where we want to get. Welcome to the Hands On Business Podcast. Where else are you going to come to get tips, tricks and advice on growing your business? Now, as you know, what people really tend to love about this podcast is that it is a place where you can hear real business leaders discussing systems, methodologies and strategies that they've actually used to help them catapult growth in their own businesses. So I'm your podcast host, Hakim Adebiyi, and I've grown several small businesses to multi-million pound enterprises, and I noticed that there wasn't really a place that focused on where I was, i.e. growing a small business. All of the content that seemed to be out there was about big business and often just lots of theory and no practical, implementable advice, which is exactly why I set up this podcast. Today is going to be one of my Business Bite sessions, which is, as you probably already know, me musing on a specific topic for business that has piqued my interest. So the question on my mind today is, do you need a vision if you're in a small business? Or... Is that vision mumbo jumbo just for those big conglomerates, the likes of Apple, the Googles, you know, got all day and all night to think about fantastic visions. Now, spoiler alert, I actually think a a vision is key, whatever the type of business you're in. I don't care whether it's small, medium, large, and I'm going to tell you why. So as Simon Sinek says, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And the why, in my opinion, can otherwise be described as a vision. Now. The importance of it in a small business is that it serves as a roadmap for where the business is headed and it provides a sense of purpose and direction for obviously the person who owns the business, but also the people within that business, i.e. the employees. And without a vision, a small business can very easily lose its way and start to struggle to achieve its goals if it actually indeed knows what its goals are. And this is especially true of a small business because we don't have all the checks and balances, uh, you know, and all the people and all the vision values uh, people that are in place in a bigger business. So that's why I believe understanding the role of vision in a small business is crucial for business leaders because it does, and I'm going to talk to you about it, it leads to success if done correctly. Now, it's something that when I go into consults with businesses and I ask them, you know, what their vision is or where, where they put their vision, they either, you know, look at me as if I'm crazy or they just look lost. And that's because most people make it really complicated. And they make it complicated because there's a whole business and the whole industry about it, isn't there? You know, people come in, they're going to consult for two or three days, they're going to take you off site, they're going to write all these, you know, mind maps, et cetera, and talk to you about uh, the vision. And then you're just making lots and lots of money for consultants. I really come down on the side of Chris Hurst. uh, And if you don't know who he is, he's the author of No Bullshit Leadership. If you haven't read it, Go and read it. It's a great book. And if you're interested in leadership and vision, all this sort of stuff, it it sets it out very clearly. Now, what he says is that vision is simply trying to articulate where you want to get to from where you are today. Simple. It doesn't need to be super complicated. Obviously, if you're a consultant, you want it to be complicated because you want to spend lots of time, charge lots of money to come out with a vision that people are actually really going to focus on or follow. Um, Anyway, that's just a little bugbear of mine. But developing a clear vision statement for a small business 
is the first step, as I've said, in crafting a roadmap for growth and obviously therefore success. And, and a vision statement has to articulate the long-term goals and aspirations of the business in, this is really important, in a concise and inspiring way. It should reflect the values and beliefs of the business owner, obviously, and serve as a guiding light for decision-making and strategic planning. And I'm going to come and talk on more about that and how the vision is linked to decision-making and strategic planning. Because if you take the time to develop a clear and concise and inspiring vision statement, then business leaders can align their team around a common goal and therefore inspire them to work towards a shared vision. I think that's pretty simple. So let's get into some examples. Now, I'm a great Man United fan. I make no bones about that. I don't know it. So I'm going to give you an example from Manchester United. When Sir Alex Ferguson took over Manchester United in 1986, he had one simple vision, and that was to knock Liverpool off their perch. And the perch he was talking about was being the most successful English football club in history. Now, at the time, back in 1986, this was almost laughable. It was unthinkable because when you looked at where Man United were and where they wanted to get to, i.e. where Liverpool were, it just wasn't possible. It was so, it's something that was just like outside the realms of reality. However, his singular focus to build an organisation to meet that specific vision kept him concentrated on the activities that are going to enable him and did enable him to achieve that vision. So how you then do that and what you actually do, in, and in the case of business, what products and services you're going to offer, all have to come from that initial vision. And it may well have taken Sir Alec over 20 years, but when he left in 2013, he had actually achieved that vision. Now, similarly, another example is the Olympic rowing team in the late 1990s. And yes, I love a sporting analogy and I love sport. Uh, but they had a vision back in the late 1990s of winning an Olympic gold in 2000. Now, to do that, they developed a simple mantra of, will it make the boat go faster? Because they realized if it makes the boat go faster, they're going to get closer to that goal. They're going to get closer to that end goal. If it doesn't make the boat go faster, then it's not going to help. So anything that made the boat go faster, they focused on, and they did it. E.g., getting up at 7 a.m. on a Sunday morning to train makes the boat go faster. So they did it. But then anything that didn't make the boat go faster, they jettisoned to focus on those things that did. E.g., going to a pub on a Saturday night doesn't make the boat go faster, unfortunately. So therefore, they didn't do it. And then can you start to now see how that sort of thinking may streamline a small business and keep everybody focused and engaged in the getting from where we are now to where we want to get to. Now, those are a couple of sporting analogies. So let's move into industry to see, um, you know, some examples there. Now, I'm not a fan of Tesla, as anyone who knows me will tell you, and that's a complete understatement. But their um, vision statement when they started was quite simple. And it was to create the most compelling car company of the 21st century by driving the world's transition to electric vehicles. Simple, no jargon, you know what to try to do. And they were small ones, weren't they? But that's been their guiding light and look at them now. And they've actually recently changed it to Tesla is accelerating the world's transition to sustainable energy. Still very simple, but it also shows how you can change as your position changes. Because if you remember, what we said was a vision is saying how you get from where you are now to where you were. When they started, they hadn't moved the electric vehicle market. So that was their vision. They've now moved the electric vehicle market. So that's where they are. So they then have to adapt their vision. And then the vision is now accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. And it's an evolution on the same goal, really. But as they get bigger and they have more resources, they obviously have bigger ambitions. So what this helps you do is keep yourself focused. But it only helps keep yourself focused when the vision is nice and simple. It's much harder to keep focused on the vision and have it drive everything you do when you have something, and I'll give an example from my industry, healthcare, like. And I'm not going to mention the company because uh, I don't want to get sued. But the company, their vision is to strive with the utmost effort and strong determination to meet the challenge of combining our individual competencies to deliver new solutions. Now, maybe someone who works in that company can tell me what the hell that means because I haven't got a clue. 
But how do you get behind that of an employee? You know, it, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. You know, the Tesla one, all of those are nice and simple. Um, but, you know, I've got to be fair and balanced, as you always have to. You know, not all of the healthcare ones are bad. You know, for example, Eli Lilly and Company, nice and simple, to make medicines that help people live longer, healthier, more active lives. It's lovely. Nice and easy. So if you look at this one, the, the Eli Lilly, you look at Manchester United under Sir Alec and his vision, you look at Tesla, you look at the Roan team, they've all got several things in common. One, there's no jargon. All the words are simple and easy to understand. So you, you're not, you don't need a degree to understand what, what on earth he's talking about. Number two, they're all pretty short and sweet. Number three, everyone in the company is going to know if their activities are building towards that vision or they're not. And number four, the journey to achieve something clear and tangible makes it worthwhile. So that obviously leads to employee engagement. So now you've got the vision, that's not enough. And I'm hoping that convinced you that a vision is important. But once you've got it, and I, I say this, and lots of people will think, oh, yeah, but everyone knows that once you've got the vision, it's not enough. You have to communicate it. But I have actually worked in an organization where the MD did say in a board meeting, yeah, yeah, we, we have a vision. I just haven't communicated it. Well, it's pointless then. Because you need to communicate effectively if you really want it to live. It's not very hard to do when it's nice and simple like the positive ones I've just mentioned. It's a lot harder when it's biz no bollocks. And it's not just about communicating it once. It's about regularly communicating the vision to employees, to stakeholders, and ensuring that everyone is on the same page and working towards the same goals. Now, the beauty of this is that this kind of alignment towards the goals and the, and the vision and lead to increased motivation. It leads to engagement and productivity among team members. And this has been seen very clearly in places like Google and Colgate, to name but a few, you can make, name loads more. Because they have clear visions, they then attract people who align to that vision. They then build values within that organization that drive that vision. And they have very, very high levels of employee satisfaction and retention. So again, you can start to see why this is quite important for a small business because actually losing someone in a small business has a significantly larger impact than losing somebody in a big business because you've got many more people. It's a smaller percentage. And the same thing in terms of actually engagement. So as I said earlier, the great thing about a clear, simple vision is it can then be used to drive decision making and strategic planning. And this is obviously a key way to ensure that the business stays on track towards its long term goals. Because just like in the Olympic rowing team example I gave, you know, when making decisions, business leaders can refer back to that vision statement to guide them to make the right decisions. It's quite simple, really, because you're then triaging, aren't you? And you're saying, well, actually, does that help us achieve that vision? Yes, we'll do it. Does it not help us achieve the vision? Right, we'll get rid of it. Simple. Similarly, when you're creating strategic plans, the vision statement would and should serve as a guide for setting priorities and allocating resources in a way that supports the vision. So lastly, a simple but clear vision means that you can now incorporate the vision into marketing and branding strategies, which is obviously important. You know, you go now moving into customer facing because that can then help you differentiate the business in the marketplace and start to attract customers who share the same values and beliefs. And that's becoming more and more uh, important that, you know, consumers are looking at what your values are. They're looking at what your, your, your views on diversity and inclusion are. They're looking at what your views on sustainability are. All these things are really important in attracting the right customers because by aligning marketing and branding efforts with the vision statement business leaders can create consistent and authentic brand identity which then resonates with their target audience this can then obviously lead to increased customer loyalty brand recognition and obviously market share for the business which is growth and cash so if you haven't got a clear and compelling vision for your business yet go and get one it doesn't have to be complicated but go and get one because it will give a clear direction of travel for your business it will energize your team. It will help with decision making and priorities. And lastly, it enables you to attract customers based on your vision, values, and beliefs. Because remember, people don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. And if you want to pick up the show notes, head over to the salesaccelerationformula.com forward slash podcast hyphen show hyphen notes and you'll be able to subscribe to our mailing list and get show notes for every single episode and as always 
Subscribe, like, and share with your friends, colleagues, and anyone else who you think may be interested. But most of all, keep the feedback coming so that we can continue to improve and give you more of what you like. Hope you enjoyed this as much as I did, and as I always do. Um, keep listening and keep growing. 